Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Star Wars Coffee, where in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the next era of Star Wars films set in the High Republic. That's today here on Star Wars Coffee. I have spoken. Hello there to all of the returning subscribers, but if you're new to the channel and you're just finding me for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button on this video and any other video from the channel that you check out, and be sure to hit that notification bell so that the bell is completely filled in, as this, this is the way. way you will never miss a new video the second it goes live. Do it! Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, has been coming out lately and saying the following, that Disney is going to be more sparse in its approach to Star Wars as they've done six films since acquiring the movie franchise in 2015. And with that being the case, there's going to be a lot more space in between these next couple of movies, whereas we would get seven anthology, eight anthology, nine. Uh, now we're going to be doing it more sparsely. So the next Star Wars film isn't slated to come out until 2022, which if you're with the rest of the timeline, it's going to be after The Mandalorian Season 2, and likely after Kenobi and Cassian Endor's Season 1 and the Kenobi miniseries comes out. Which gives us a lot of time from now to then. And what we are finding out is that Disney is, as I've been saying, I've said this in videos in the past, Disney is very good at putting things uh, hinting it, foreshadowing. They're very good at doing that. They're able to tie all of these different mediums together, which is something that I think is very important in the sense for the hardcore fan to really uh, appreciate the storytelling that uh, Marvel and Disney are able to do through all of these different mediums. But it's also important because it continues to give us a hint at where they're going to be taking the franchise. And if you recall, uh, about a week or two ago, I did a video talking about these next series of Star Wars films about the High Republic. You can go check that video out on the channel. For all of the major details about that production and what we know about it so far. But the reason I wanted to talk about it again today is because Marvel continues to release more Star Wars comics. And in the issue, one of the issues that just came out recently, there was another mention of this High Republic, specifically saying the words the High Republic, which is something that I think is important to note and continues to give more credibility to this idea that this really is going to be the next series in Star Wars films. So here's the image and here is what it says as follows. In the days of the High Republic, the galaxy was not as settled as it is now. Areas like the Outer Rim were dangerous, hard to navigate. So the people of that time built a huge space station at great effort and expense and placed it in the center of the Dark Zones. It sent out a signal that acted as sort of a beacon, helping travelers find their way. And if you take note, the High Republic is something that really isn't canon as of now in the Star Wars, uh, Disney Star Wars timeline. And the reason that that's important that it was name dropped is because it continues to show what I was just talking about, about the foreshadowing of Disney and all of the things that they're able to do through all of these different mediums. Uh, this is obviously pointing to the fact that we're going to be getting this next era of Star Wars films, and it really points in the direction that it is going to be about the High Republic. And just a quick backstory on the High Republic, uh, you can go check out the full video again for all of the, the details on that. But the uh, basic bullet points is it's going to be taking place after um, the timeline of Knights of the Old Republic. And it's going to be taking place before the prequel, so it's in the middle of that. And we're going to be seeing, potentially, the only two characters we could see that we already currently know and in the established canon is Yoda and perhaps R2, if R2 units were already built at that point. But the only character that would have been around is uh, Yoda. Because... Uh, Chewbacca, as in Solo, was only 190 years old. So depending on how how uh, close to the prequels they get, this would be um, the only other character that you might be able to see. And this piece, uh, this uh, pull, pulled piece from this comic, is written by Charles Soule. And the reason that that's important is because he's going to be doing, he's involved in Project Luminous. And that announcement we just uh, found out is going to be getting an announcement on February 24th. We're going to be getting that whole announcement there about what Project Luminous is, is and the details that it's going to contain. And Charles Soule has done a lot, a lot, a lot of Star Wars content in these last couple of years. He's done extremely excellent work, especially his Vader series. I re highly recommend you go check the Vader series out. And the reason I say this, again, is because Disney is really good at hinting and foreshadowing and setting up the narrative that they're going to do. 
They didn't have an overall outline for the three Rise of Skywalker saga films, but they, they clearly have an outline of where they want to go in terms of storytelling and setting up, uh, hinting at Easter eggs of where we're going to be going in the future with much better plan. And I think that that's important, especially if you take a look at this final season of The Clone Wars. Why isn't Ahsoka in Revenge of the Sith in terms of the canon? Obviously, it's because she wasn't a character created at that point yet. She hadn't come to be at that point. But now they have to put it into context of why she isn't in there, why she's gone. And we already know that because of Rebels and, and what happened with the fallout there. But clearly, they're seeding it up to Revenge of the Sith. And this last season is going to be intertwined with Revenge of the Sith. And... All of the stuff that uh, didn't end up making George Lucas's four and a half hour cut might end up in some form or fashion in this final season of The Clone Wars. Which just goes to show that Disney is actually more meticulous than we give them credit for when it comes to seeding future content. And so I just thought again that I would share that High Republic mention with you to show that it is gaining more credibility, especially in the actual uh, canon of Disney Star Wars. Once more, to end this video, in the days of the High Republic, the galaxy was not as settled as it is now. So it's going to be more of a chaotic environment. There will be Jedi involved, but there will also be heroes that aren't Jedi, villains that aren't Sith, uh, etc. But let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think that this points to the High Republic becoming uh, closer to fruition, being slated, maybe get that announcement with whatever Project Luminous is tied in with? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching. May God bless you and the Force be with you. If you enjoyed this episode, and frankly, even if you didn't, don't forget to subscribe. Do it! And if you want to help spread the word, please give this video a thumbs up and tell your friends to subscribe. Please check out the official Star Wars Coffee merchandise, and don't forget to check out all of the content playlists on this channel, including The Rise of Skywalker, The Mandalorian, and much more.